What's up everybody? Today we're going to be making this little ghost character, which is a pretty simple character, great for beginners. We'll be using some cloth simulation and we'll be looking at how to use pin groups so that we can make that work better for our character. With that being said, let's get started. Today is the default cubes day because it is going to be used. We're going to start in the front view, we're going to click the default cube, we're going to go up here to add modifier, we're going to add a subdivision modifier. Now what I'm going to do is up this to three subdivisions. I'm going to click this little arrow here and I'm going to apply. With that, we have the top of our ghost. So let's go ahead and modify this. Let's tab into edit mode here. We're going to switch to vertices selection up here. I'm going to go over to wireframe view and now we can box select to grab through here to the bottom. So what I want to do is grab the bottom half here so that we have that selected. I'm going to press E to extrude or you can use the extrude tool over here. Then I'm going to move that down on the Z axis. And at this point, I'm just going to try and choose kind of like the length I want my ghost to be, which will stop around here. I want him to be a little guy, so I'm gonna stop around there. After that, let's go ahead and grab our scale tool here. Then we can grab this little gizmo here on the Z axis and we're just gonna kind of flatten out the bottom there. Now we need to add edge loops here. You can use the edge loop tool over here, but I prefer to use the control R and then that gives us this little yellow line in the center. We're going to rotate this up and we want those faces to be about the same size. So whatever that looks like on your project. Now I'm going to deselect everything there. I'm going to go back to solid view. I'm going to come down here to the bottom. I'm going to switch to edge selection mode. Now if I alt click, I can get rid of some of these edges. But first, I'm going to go back out to object mode, grab this object, right click, shade smooth, then I'm going to add a modifier, and I'm going to add a subdivision surface. I'm just going to leave that at level one for now. I'm going to tab back into edit mode here, and I'm going to delete some of these edge loops that we don't need. So by alt clicking, I will select the entire edge loop. So let's go ahead and alt click this edge loop, and then we can dissolve this edge. Let's come up here, let's grab this one here, and we can dissolve that edge. Now, if we tab back out on object mode, we can see that's giving us a slightly softer bottom. Now, what we wanna do is give the little ghost kind of its little kind of tendrils hanging down. Back here inside of edit mode, what we're going to do is come down here and I might actually get rid of one more edge loop. So I'm going to click this edge loop here and dissolve that edge. And what that does is give us this kind of chunkier edge loop out here. So what we can do is switch to face selection mode. We're going to alt click here and then what we can do is come up here to the select menu and we can checker deselect and that'll allow us to select every other one. And if you want, you can extrude down from there and you'll kind of get those tendrils that I was talking about before. However, I'm going to go ahead and just maybe deselect just one or two to kind of give it a little less uniformity. Now with that, what I'm going to do is come back out here to the front view and I'm going to hit extrude and kind of bring those down. Now what I'm going to do is move around and kind of scale some of these up randomly and scale some of them down. So just using the X key, just gonna kind of grab some of those faces on the bottom, kind of move those around, just give them a little bit of variety and size there. This will just make it seem a little less uniform. Now what we can do is grab just a couple random ones here. We'll grab the move tool here. and We'll move a couple of those down a little bit lower We'll grab a couple more of these and bring those up a little bit higher. And with that, that'll give us just a little bit more kind of randomness there. Now, if you want, you can go around and play with the edges here. I'll probably do that at the end, just before I go to render to make this look a little less cylindrical on the bottom. But for the sake of the speed of this tutorial, we're just gonna move ahead because I feel like you can kind of figure that out on your own. Let's go back here into edit mode. We're going to switch over to wireframe. I'm going to go here to the vertices here and I'm going to box select everything here on the bottom. Now I'm going to turn on proportional editing, which will allow us to edit multiple vertices. And then what I'm going to do is hit scale and move this up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna use my mouse wheel to kind of scroll up until we get kind of more of a billowy bottom there. And what that'll do is give us just a little bit more shape in our ghost. So now with that being said, we can go ahead and add our cloth body sim. So let's come down here to the physics tab. We're going to add a cloth and then we're going to come back here to our modifier tab. We're going to move that above subdivision. Otherwise it's going to calculate all of these and that might make it take too long. So now if we hit play, 
from the beginning, we will see that it will just drop off screen, which is not what we want. So what we're going to do is pin our vertices. So if we come down here to the vertices, shape, we can see that we have this option for these vertices right here, and we can create a pin group. So first we need to create a vertex group. So that being said, let's grab this, let's create a new vertex group, and let's call this pin. And then we're going to tab into edit mode. We're going to go to wireframe mode. So let's go ahead and we will select this upper half here. And with our weight set to one, we're going to hit assign, and that will give that a full weight there. Now let's select these down here, just a couple more rows, and we'll lower this down to 0.5 and hit assign. And then we can come down here and grab a couple rows and change this to 0.25 and then assign. And that should give us a kind of a gradual fade off. Now there's this blur option up here. So if you don't like the results, you can kind of move around and blur and make that just a little more subtle. And what this is going to do is that when we use the pen group, everything up here isn't going to move and then it'll kind of subtly move as we go down, which is what we want to get that kind of bouncy look on our character. I'm going to go back to object mode here. I'm going to come over to the cloth physics tab. And now if I hit play, we'll see that it's still falling. So what we're going to do is put our pen group in there. So we'll come down here, click pen. And now when we hit play, we'll see that it's pinned up here and that only the bottom's moving. So let's go ahead and parent this to an object that we can use as a controller. So let's hit Shift A and you can pick any object you want. I'm going to use a curve and I'm going to use a circle here at the top. And then I'm going to scale that out just a little bit. I'm going to call this Ghost Control. And we'll grab our ghost and we will pin that to this. And if I hit Control P, we can do object and keep transform. That way it keeps our object there. And now we can move this around to animate our ghost position. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna grab a keyframe to demonstrate. And I'm just going to move it over here. And you'll notice that it won't update and that's because it needs to kind of recache the simulation. But there we go. If we hit play, we can see that it is moving and kind of bouncing around with the cloth. And we can see that right now, the cloth is a little too thin. Now part of that's because we have a sudden movement, but let's go ahead, I'm going to lower this end keyframe here so that we can let that loop. Currently though, he's way too soft with his cloth. So what I'm actually going to do is go ahead and grab here and we can make some adjustments over here. Now we have tension, compression, shear, and bending. Now I dive into all of these in my soft body tutorial. So today I'm just gonna tell you the numbers to input, but if you're curious what all these actually do, you can go ahead and take a look at that tutorial or play with these until you get something you like on your own. I'm gonna turn the tension up to 25. I'm going to turn the compression up to 25. I'm gonna turn the shear up to 10. Then I'm going to turn the bending up to 10. Now let's hit play and we can still see that it's moving fairly quickly. So what I can do is come down here. I'm going to grab this and I'm actually just going to move our keyframes out because it's not likely that a ghost is ever going to snap from left to right like that quickly. And if we hit play here, you can see that we're starting to get kind of a wobbly looking little ghost. So let's go ahead and give him a face and some arms. So first let's work on the arms. So I'm gonna hit add and I'm going to go to mesh. I'm going to add a UV sphere. I'm going to drag that off over here to the side. And what I'm going to do is tab into edit mode, switch to wireframe mode, box select the bottom here, just delete those vertices. And then what I'm going to do is hit E and extrude this just straight down. And we're gonna turn this into a little arm. So let's go ahead, scale this up here. And then we'll come back out to object mode and we're going to shrink that down. And you can see as we shrink it down, we might need to make the arm a little bit longer. So I'll tab back out into edit mode here. We're just gonna turn off proportional editing there and we're going to pull that down and just give ourselves kind of a little pointy arm there. So now we'll grab everything here and we're going to move this up to the origin point and that's so that we can rotate here. Now what we can do is go ahead and rotate that arm around here, switch back over to solid view, right click, shade smooth. We're going to move that into our little ghost there. Now we could pin this to our body here, but it might cause some issues when using cloth physics. So what we'll actually do is parent this to our control up here with object keep transform. And then now as we move this around, we'll be able to kind of move our character. And now we can rotate our little arm there and we can go ahead and we can duplicate that arm. 
Once we've duplicated that, we'll come up here, we will grab the 3D cursor, we will hit R, Z, and then type in 180, and what that's going to do is rotate that around 180 degrees. We'll go back here, we'll set this back to median point, and we'll make sure that everything here is attached. And with that, we have a little ghost that we can animate. Now, if you've seen my simple face rig tutorial, you can actually go ahead and use that to create a face if you'd like to animate a face for him. I'm not planning on animating his face, so I'm actually going to show you how to use a stencil and texture paint if you'd like to learn how to use that. I'll post a link to his face in the description below so that you can follow along. What we're going to do is grab the main body here. We're going to tab over to texture paint. And once we have texture paint, you'll see here that it gives us this purple color, and we'll fix that in a second. We're gonna press the N key to open our toolbar. And up here we have no texture. So we're going to click add here. We're going to add a base color. I'm gonna set mine to 2048 by 2048 so I don't get any pixelation. I'm gonna grab this color, and I'm just gonna crank that all the way up to white since he's a ghost. And then I'm gonna go ahead, hit okay. I'm gonna make sure that this color here is solid black. I'm gonna come down here and we have all these options here. Then under my brush settings, I'm gonna twirl down the texture tab here. I'm going to click new, I'm going to name this face. And then if we click over here, we can import an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and import this little face texture that I already have. And we'll see that that face texture appears here. Now what we can do is come from mapping and we can change that over to stencil. And when you see that, you'll see that it kind of appears down here in the bottom left. So to move that, you right click and you can move that around. Now to change that size, you can shift click and drag inwards and kind of shrink it around. So just move that around until you get it somewhere that you're happy with on your character there. So I'm gonna drag mine maybe right around there until I get something that feels just right, which that feels good to me. Now what we can do is we can just paint over this and it'll stencil it onto our character. So let's just go ahead and drag over this and it's going to stencil black onto our character. So now if we rotate around, we can see that texture is on there. So let's go back over here, drag out here. I'm going to switch to object mode over here, turn on material view and make sure that the face is there. And to double check, what you can do is go into the shader editor here, make sure that that ghost base color that you created is plugged into the base color there of your BSDF or whatever material you are using. Before we hop over to how I made this character, let's talk about our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives and lifelong learners where millions come together to improve their skills. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people on topics including illustration, design, freelancing, 3D, and more. It's a membership with meaning. You get thousands of classes and most are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule and to fit all skill levels. I personally have a few 3D courses on there. Although not a traditional 3D class, I highly recommend this Productivity Masterclass as a way to boost your productivity and to improve your 3D workflow and the time you spend on your 3D projects. For a limited time, use the link in my description to get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. And with that, you should have a little ghost rig. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the bottom of my character a bit more. And another thing you can do is you can actually just create little objects for him to hold, like the sign I created. And if you do that, what you can do is take that sign kind of place it on his hand, and then you can just hit Control P and parent that with the Keep Transform, and then he'll carry whatever little object you have around. But with that, we've created a little ghost rig. I'm really excited to see what you create, so please tag me in anything you create on Instagram.